Thank you so much, and uh, shalom from Israel. Uh, so I'm Ayan, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about trends, challenges in EU, Israel, in Israel and in Europe, and a little bit about what we are doing in the IT Hub Israel. And uh, yeah, let's start. So starting with um, a little bit of numbers of what's happening in Israel right now. So we have uh, a little bit more than 7,000 active startups in Israel across domains, uh, 19 government incubators, more than 100 accelerators in Israel, uh, 250 VCs, 62 of them are international, and uh, almost 450 MNCs that I will touch uh, on this topic in a second. Um, so I don't know if you know a little bit about Israel, the startup nation right now is the scale-up nation or the unicorn nation, how do you want to call it? But in general, one innovative company for every 1,400 people. So this is pretty crazy for uh, a country with less than 10 million people. And very young, 74 years old, 75. Um, so a little bit, who are the European players in the Israeli ecosystem? Um, uh, we're talking about academia, industry, innovation hubs, VCs, and government. Uh, and just to show you, this is a beautiful slide that I really love. So you can see that the majority of MNCs in Israel are from America, North America, but we see that the, the, the trend is that a lot of European MNCs are starting to come to Israel to open R&D centers, uh, accelerators, innovation hubs, and uh, um, I believe this trend is going to get bigger and bigger. Um, and not just they're doing um, innovation, they're doing a lot more other things. So R&D, as I mentioned, and much more. Um, so some of the trends that we see is, um, you can see uh, the European is the 22% slides, uh, slides over here, slides, sorry, and the rest of the world 78%. And uh, I'm here also to show you how we overcome this gap and how we uh, want to make it even to the US companies that are in Israel uh, these days. Um, so a little bit about why we see this gap. So first of all, lack of awareness of, or, and or innovation gap. So many uh, Israelis doesn't know what are the tax uh, um, limitations in each of the EU countries. So this is a huge gap. Also the regulation. There is a, a, a concept uh, in Israelis' mindset and Israeli entrepreneurs that regulation is really hard in Europe and it's quite the opposite uh, comparing to the US and comparing to maybe Asia and Israel as well. So this is also something that uh, they don't know about. Um, sometimes that there isn't enough information in English for Israeli entrepreneurs. So sometimes it's hard for them to know who should they target, which country is their target market. And uh, sometimes um, the EU is uh, focusing uh, only on the EU and not the rest of the world, comparing to the US. Well, you're in the US, you're looking to, to facing the world and other US countries and not just one. So this is a huge challenge. Uh, the second one is um, lack of connectors. So I don't know who from you has been uh, uh, in Israel, but in Israel, when you know someone, uh, you probably know his friend and his father and his grandmother. So uh, because we are very small and this is how it works and we have the military, military service, so it's pretty easy to connect to the CEO of this company and to the VP marketing of this company. And in Europe, sometimes it's hard because, it's hard because you don't have connectors uh, that can connect you to the, you know, the big names, the big corporates that you want to work with. So this is something uh, that we're trying to change. Uh, the third uh, challenge is uh, perceptions. So there is a perception in Israel that Europe is a little bit uh, has a dated or conservative market, uh, um, um, which is something which is, I can say that is not true in most of the cases, but it's something that Israel has this uh, thought. And the fourth thing is competition. So uh, I don't know if you know, but many Israeli companies and startups are very successful in the US. So uh, we like to call it Israelis are following the money. They're going to the US immediately. They jump over Europe. They jump over Israel. 
And um, it's very easy for them because in the US, everyone speaks English. Uh, it's a one-stop shop. Uh, you have investors, you have programs, you have uh, uh, VCs, and you have the market. So when you're, once you're, let's say, uh, investing, um, establishing something in uh, Texas, you can also do it in New York and Miami and Silicon Valley. So this is a huge competition for the EU. But we do see some really happy uh, uh, trends. So Israeli-based companies and VCs are looking more and more to work with and invest in European talent and technology. European startups are looking at Israel as a gateway to the global market because of MNC's presence. Uh, the majority of Israeli startups are seeking to grow in the US market and tend to jump over Europe. This is something that we're trying to uh, change. In certain domains, Israeli startups are looking more to the European market as a potential growth opportunity, like in energy, circular economy, and climate. And FOMO, fear of missing out, high engagement, and a thirst for more EU-Israel innovation or collaborations. So, what do we do? EAT. So EAT established uh, around 12 years ago by Horizon and the European Commission to uh, grow and to uh, uh, build the ecosystem in Europe. It includes, it's not that updated, but more than 3,000 uh, industry uh, partners uh, that are paying a yearly retainer and they are exposed to deal flow, to programs, to grants and much more. I'm talking about universities, academia, research centers, municipalities, and all of the big names that you know, like Bosch, Siemens, PepsiCo, and more. Um, basically, their main goal is to take entrepreneurs from lab to market and to, and to help in all the life cycle of startups. Uh, so this is what happens in Europe. Uh, EIT decided to tackle the biggest uh, challenges of humanity in their eyes. It's close to the SDGs uh, challenges. So we're talking about health, food, digital, climate, inner energy, manufacturing, raw materials, and urban mobility. And each one of those kick kick is a knowledge innovation community, has its own programs, its own teams, its own headquarters. So it's a very, very big organization. A few years ago, EAT uh, looked into uh, the ranking of the leading ecosystems in the world, and they said, we need to branch out, we need to scale, and to open hubs outside of Europe. So naturally, the first one was in Silicon Valley five years ago. Three years ago, Israel, which is, I'm representing the Israeli hub, and UK coming soon, now they're not part of the EU. So a little bit about what we do. We create a bridge, as you can see, and create synergy between the Israeli ecosystem and the European ecosystem in order to make uh, more EU-Israel collaborations. So let me go quickly about our programs, uh, really quickly because I don't have much time. So uh, Mind the Gap, we uh, assist uh, European researchers to take their research and to commercialize it Maybe in Israel, maybe in Europe, it's their choice. They're coming to Israel for one week and we train them with Israeli experts and VCs and they pitch for the first time their research as a group. Uh, connect and experience. So we identified that uh, a lot of innovation managers and acceleration managers in Europe uh, have the community, have the the network, but they don't know exactly how to support the startups in their communities. So br bring them to Israel as well, and we train them also with Israeli best practices and know-how, and eventually it became a huge community. Now it's more than 50 people in this community. Next up is calling to scale. So also we identify that startups from Europe and Israel that has at least one round of funding, a working product or a prototype, doesn't know how to uh, enter new markets. So within three months in calling to scale, we help them penetrate new markets and do a matchmaking with industries, potential clients, VCs, and so on. So this is really, really relevant for any of you here that wants to hear more. Disrupt Me, this is an open innovation program for European corporates that are willing to uh, implement Israeli technology in their, uh, basically in their industry, in their uh, corporate, in their business. So we, uh, within seven months, we scout for Israeli technologies that tackles their challenges, and uh, they're coming to Israel, meet the startups, and hopefully uh, we have a lot of POCs between Israel and EU. Next up, Bridging the Horizon. Roundtables uh, four times a year around open calls of Horizon. We bring 10 Israeli players, 10 European players, and hopefully to connect and to have a lot of consortiums together. Uh, we have, I will show you in a second how much we did so far. 
and mission innovation, we identified, also we like to identify things, uh, that many uh, European diplomats who are coming to Israel, in the first year, they don't know anything, they don't know anyone, and we uh, took, uh, we select 10 diplomats and we train them and to, we expose them to the Israeli ecosystem in order uh, for them to bring their unique value proposition to Israel and to have many uh, uh, programs and to do a lot of collaborations. Um, a little bit about our impact. So we have so far 260 professional trained, 18 European corporates and SMEs in innovation process. 10% income secured, seven joint Israel-EU consortium formed, 47 startup support, and 92% uh, uh, overall satisfaction, which is amazing. So overall, our startup raised 7.7 .7 million euros so far before and during our programs. You can see below some of the programs, uh, some of the startups, Pech AI, for example, Italian startup in the uh, pharma industry was acquired by Alira Health. Uh, six Degrees got an investment from Anon Group from the Netherlands, so you see this EU-Israel collaborations. Three POCs and five advanced processes between Israeli startups and European corporates, uh, if you know those names. So this is from our Open Innovation Program. And Winning Consortium, you can see over here. This is some of the companies that are alumni. Maybe you can recognize some of your countries and the startups as well. Um, so let me go quickly in the last uh, three minutes about why Israel and why I'm here and talking about Israel. So first of all, Israel is an island with no natural resources. As you know or don't know, we don't have a lot of friends around our country. So we basically uh, and can't do uh, uh, trade with our neighbors. So what we do is we need to uh, um, bring from outside resources. So this is something that is challenging for Israel, but we do it. Um, military service. So myself and the rest of the citizens of Israel needs to uh, go to the army at the age of 18 for two years or three years, depends on uh, what you do. And um, besides this is mandatory, this is good uh, for your entrepreneur life, if you want to say, because it gives you a soft skills that you probably won't have in any other place. First of all, you're going out of your house, you're very independent in a very young age, uh, you get uh, um, um, to be, um, to command other people, so you need to manage, you need to uh, uh, manage your schedule and other people in the military service. And uh, if you're in an intelligence unit or anything related to cyber or something like that, computer, you get those skills and immediately when you're released from the army, you get offered from a lot of high-tech companies. So this is something very unique. Uh, immigrant society. So I don't know if you know, but in Israel there is a lot of uh, immigrants from uh, Russia and, and other Ethiopia and other places. So I say that uh, it's the immigrant uh, characteristics are equal to entrepreneur char characteristics because you have nothing to lose. You're coming to a new place, you need to start over. So this is very similar to entrepreneur life. Sometimes you fail and you don't have uh, no choice and just to move on. So this is very uh, uh, related to this. Community sense. So I mentioned before, you know one person in Israel, you know 10 people. So it's exactly like that. And also, um, there is a saying that if you throw a stone in Israel, you will probably hit an entrepreneur. So it's really, uh, you know, there is a lot of entrepreneurs in Israel and also the community sense. I can uh, connect someone on LinkedIn. It will be very easy for me uh, to get to the high levels and not to start from uh, really low. So this is very, very uh, nice. A culture of daring. I'm all about sayings today. So there is another saying that in Israel you should uh, fail fast and fail cheap. A lot of investors are uh, very in favor of entrepreneurs that already failed, that already had something in their lives and they have this experience. They raise up and do it again. So uh, investors are really looking forward to invest in investors that already failed. And also, um, it also relates to that. It's okay to fail in Israel. Okay, so there is this uh, daring of entrepreneurs that are keep on going, and it's something that investors are really looking for. I put a slide of uh, just to show you. I don't have time, but a little bit about how many Israeli tech companies raised: uh, 24.6 billion euros. You can see between 2020 and 2021 this jump, 
And um, about that and about the next slides, I would love to share with you outside um, since we don't have time. But thank you so much, and I'm open to any questions.